Hello everybody and welcome to Forgotten Friday Favorites or Friday Forgotten Favorites or Forgotten Friday Favorites. However you want to say it, tonight is about talking about things that we kind of maybe collect and have and just leave them on a shelf somewhere or leave them somewhere and forget about them, but they're still so cool and we should be sharing these things. Now, I have to tell you, tonight I was going to do a makeup look. I thought about going live and doing a makeup look. I actually have two palettes here. Um, one is my Peeps Hip Dot palette. This is from 2021. She's two years old. So yeah, if you don't know, if you're new to indie makeup, Hip Dot did this really cute Peeps collab. And the cutest things they did was they came out with sponges, like beauty blender type sponges that were Peeps. Adorable. Yes, I got them. Um, here are the colors. They're very springy. They're very, you might look and go, they're very not me. I was thinking about doing Easter goth, but I think I'm going to do this on Sunday. So this will be kind of like a forgotten Friday favorite on Sunday because I kind of want to do this for Easter. But this is definitely not a forgotten favorite. I always have this around and I really like it. I love the peeps. And it's so cool that where they make peeps, I don't know, you know, peeps are a love-hate thing. I know some people don't like them, but is right near my house in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It's only about 45 minutes to an hour for me, so that's cool. Um, I also have this palette that I want you to come back for next Friday because this was the other one I was thinking of doing tonight. I don't know who's going to remember this. <laughs> I, I want to say this might have come out in 2021 or 2022. I can't remember. But this was this is an indie brand called Lois Cosmetics, and this was the Meet Me in the Underworld 16 shade palette and it had like the whole story going with it but it's really cool it's kind of like spring grunge it's really nice I do want to do a look with this I think next week so for next Friday I'm going to be pre-recording some things because I'll be traveling next week so I'm probably going to do this one and um that one will go up next Friday morning uh before I forget hi I'm Mary <laughs> welcome to my channel yes I'm wearing a tank top because we have to talk about this tattoo right here, and I need you to be able to see it. And this is my voodoo over here, who is no longer with me, and a couple of my other dogs that are no longer with me. And yes, uh, my whole back is covered. I have a whole back piece. I have I'm I have a lot of tattoos. Anyway, I am a retired makeup artist, esthetician, nail tech, and hairstylist. You wouldn't know by looking at these roots, but now I live on a mountain in the middle of nowhere, and I do all this stuff for YouTube and Instagram and not so much TikTok, but sometimes because I like doing this so much more than working in a salon. It's so much more fun. Anyway, I just had something kind of whispering to me, speaking to me tonight, and I thought, you know, I do want to talk about a Friday forgotten favorite, forgotten Friday favorite, whatever we want to say. Uh, I'm hitting on some lip balm. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I don't have anything on my face. Um, just did skincare today and that's it. This is the Body Shop Swipe It Moisturizing Lip Balm. And this is the Passion Fruit Flavor. It's vegan. It's from Body Shop. I love this. It has just a real slight pink tint to it. But it smells insane. It is very, very strong smelling. If you're familiar with Body Shop, a lot of times they have very strong smells. Anyway, this is a collab with Jamie Jamrazi and with... Um, Crystal, Real Lady Electrician, and a few other people. I think Susan's sitting this one out this week. We may have a few people sitting it out because of the holiday this weekend. It Well, there's three holidays going on. So whatever you believe in, happy holiday <laughs> to whatever you're celebrating. Um, and I guess this is not so much a very Eastery kind of thing. <laughs> but it was in my room, and some things were speaking to me, namely... So um, I know some of you out there are really into crystals and stones and tarot cards and things. I never really talk about that a lot on my channel, but it is a huge part of who I am. I got into crystals and I started reading tarot cards way back when I was like 16, uh, 17 or 18 years old. I know I was driving, so I think I was like 17 or something like that. I started learning about them and then I think I bought my first deck which is right here. It's my very first tarot deck. I've had this with me since about 1986, I want to say. I think this, I think I got that in 86. 
Holy crap. Yeah, this is really going to age me too right here. It still has a price tag on it. You're going to freak out. Anyway, I have my three first tarot cards and they are my favorites. Um, actually, the <laughs> my favorite is the uh, Crowley deck. But anyway, the very first deck I bought was this one. We're going to talk about the crystals too, don't worry. Uh, I just got this bag from Killstar because I needed something to put these in. And this is kind of interesting. This is the Arthur Arthurian, I mean Arthurian, the Aquarian deck. Look, it's so ripped apart. Look how beat up it is. It's all faded. It's very beat up. So I got this one back in about 1986-ish. Oh my god, on the back it says 1970 Morgan Press Inc. Dobbs Ferry, New York. Um, yeah, so <laughs> this came out in 1970, but I actually bought this one. You can tell the writing on it and everything is like, <laughs> it's just very dated. Um, there's the back. So this was my first deck I got. And a friend of mine in high school, Chris, had a friend named Daniel. And Daniel was very cute and I had a huge crush on him. And he was a vampire boy. He was like a total vampire. And the main reason I was crazy about him is he was a vampire boy. If you're gothy, you know what I'm talking about. Especially back then. We were really into the vampire boys. And boy, was he. He was just, oh, he was so sweet and he was so cute. But he asked me if I ever read tarot cards or thought about reading tarot cards. And I said, no. And he said, you should. And you will really see these cards how uh, my ring light is on because I need a light on in here but they're really faded they're um they're not faded but they're not white anymore <laughs> like ivory and they're very simple uh I'll just show you some of them um there's the sun uh I like the justice card I always thought this one was really cool justice card um they're not real scary. I mean, they're, you could tell they do have like a 70s vibe to them. This is what the back looks like. And this is the death card, which I always liked. He's kind of like a soldier. I really like that one. Uh, I'm just going through some of the major, kind of, oh my God, I always love the high priestess. Yeah, but they're, they're like very different. They're kind of art deco. Um, the tower is very cool. Here's a few more of them. So this was my first deck, was the Aquarian deck back in about 1986. And I really, really got good at reading cards. I just had a knack for it. And um, yeah, I don't know. It was just the, oh my God, I love this one. This uh, The lover's card is really pretty. Everybody always wants to see the lover's card. So there's that one. It has this weird Gustav Klimt, if you're familiar with that artist, a little bit of his feel. Uh, I always like the star card too, this one, almost like this peacock kind of bird. And this one I love. I almost got a tattoo of this. This is the Ace of Rods. So that is one of my favorites. I love that flower. I love the colors in it. It's like this stalk. It's very cool. Um, and then the other ones that go with it in that suit look kind of like this. So they're kind of a simpler version of this guy. Anyway, so this was my first tarot deck. And yeah, I got really good at it. I used to go to um, goth bars in Detroit and I would sit at a table with a pitcher of beer and um, I would just sit there with a, can a couple of candles and I would read people's cards at night at the goth bars. And the owners knew me um, mostly at bookies in Detroit and a couple other places. But the owners always knew me, so they, they never, like, yelled at me about it. They thought it was cool. And basically, I would just do readings for people, and they would just give me a tip. They'd give, give me, like, two bucks or five bucks or whatever. But I never asked for anything. I was just, I was mainly doing it to practice. Uh, so this is another deck I got. This is the original, oh my God, copyright 1971, New Horizons Books. Oh, my God. Uh 22884. Um, this one I think I actually got before that one. So I might have gotten this in 84 but didn't start reading it and I really didn't understand it. Um, but this is the original Rider Waite tarot deck. This box is super beat up too. Uh, the cards are a little beat up. Now the thing is like the Aquarian and 
the Rider weight, and this is you you will be able to tell like this is a very old <laughs> she's kind of a very old beat up deck. Um but I just really didn't have a vibe with the Rider weight. They're very simple designs if you've seen them. The colors and everything. I don't know. I just didn't vibe with it. And the really important thing is if you're gonna get a tarot deck, you wanna have have it feel, you'll feel it in your hand, like if you, if it really is the right one and if it speaks to you at all and you really feel connected to it. Well, I felt so connected to the Aquarian deck that I got the moon from the Aquarian deck tattooed on my shoulder, which is, it's right here. It goes like this, but I had it arched up over the top instead of a square. And I have the faces of the moon and it says 18 because that is my personality card in tarot cards is the moon and my soul card is the hermit my birthday adds up to 18 which is the moon and then there's waves down here a couple of moons and then i had it go into this whole city when i moved and i left detroit i got this city um that was reminiscent of new york and uh and then i have this goes into my back piece <laughs> and i have wings on my back and i love my swirly clouds it's my favorite I always wanted the swirly clouds to come all the way around, but anyway, that's another story. Um, so yeah, I got that tattooed on me, and uh, the little ankh that is right here, there's a little tiny ankh. That was my first tattoo. $15 for that tattoo. <laughs> my first one, I think I was, I think you had to be 18. I think it was 18. I went to Eastern Michigan University in Ypsilanti. And there was a little place there called, I forgot what it's called, Venus Tattoos or something. But I had it done. It was $15. Remember the days you could walk in and get a $15 tattoo? If you're young, you won't. Anyway, this was the deck that really got me. This is the deck that got me so into cards. And this is my original Crowley deck. And wait until you see how beat up this guy is. Here's the book, <laughs> which is Falling Apart. Uh, the whole binding came apart. It's really fallen apart. I should just rebind the whole thing. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, and you'll see here, it says, in the back of the book, it says, Alistair Crawley, Thoth Tarot Calendar, 1987. So this is a deck I bought back then. And she is completely intact. The whole box is falling apart on the inside. And this is kind of like the deck that represents me the most. I do have a lot of new decks, but this is the deck that I've read the most throughout my life. Um, and there's a whole history with this. And who, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, oh my God. I'm trying to remember her name, who did the paintings for this. Oh, okay. If, if you know this deck and you know Aleister Crowley, you're yelling at me right now and... I don't know why I just cannot remember her name, but let me look in the book. Uh, I read the whole book first, and the coolest thing about this was I liked the approach that this deck takes to tarot. I liked, um, you know, kind of like the whole meaning be behind it. Oh, Frida Harris. I knew that too, Frida Harris. I, I was thinking her name when I took the deck out and I told her, yeah, Frida Harris is the woman who did all the paintings for this deck. And Interference, Strife, Empress. I mean, these cards and I are like connected. We go way, way, way back. I actually did my own painting of this one in the past. I love that. It's got the Ouroboros with the yin yangs and it's change which has two of discs. It looks like it might be a major arcana, but it's not. Um, I'm trying to find the death card is always cool to see. There's the death card. He's kind of like this like black, like pirate looking kind of, I don't know. Um, he's actually wearing an Egyptian crown. This is just the most beautiful Ace of Cups card you'll ever see though. Look at that. I love this Ace of Cups. It's gorgeous. So this, someone told me that I think this deck is worth like a lot of money now because <laughs> this is like, oh, here's my moon. Here's the moon. And I love it because if you like Egyptian, there are so many Egyptian themes and things coming through in this deck. So I really love this one a lot. 
but I literally read this deck almost every day for decades and decades. This is my baby. This is... <laughs> it smells like <laughs> four, <laughs> four decades almost of a... Uh, getting close to four decades of incense and candles and oils. I wish you could smell this. It almost has like old library smell, but very like fragrant. And because I would always like sit and have my incense and my candles and all that. So it just, oh my God, it smells so good. <laughs> oh, the universe card's gorgeous too. There it is right there. So this was the deck that really got me into reading cards and it became like a regular thing for me. So yeah, these were like, I think I want to say this was like 84, this was 86, and this one was 87. So these are my very first tarot card decks. So in case you're wondering, do I know about tarot cards? I don't know. What do you think? That's how long I've had them and, and been connected with cards. Um, so for my crystals, I used to go to, obviously I went to place the little stores. This was New Horizons Books, which was right by my house. Look, oh, so to tell you how cheap these are, look, I don't know if you can see this, $8. $8 for a tarot deck. In my day, you could get a tarot deck for $8. <laughs> okay, and you could get a crystal like this size for like $20. So this is my favorite crystal of my life. I probably, I, I don't know, I'm gonna have to pass this down to someone. I've actually let people borrow this not very often, but this one is very special. It has like a really strong vibration to it. I used to fall asleep when I was a teenager, I'd fall asleep holding this. And every time I fell asleep holding this crystal, I would have the most vivid, crazy dreams. And the thing I like about it, I'm gonna see if you can see it. It's got this inclusion in it like here, and it almost looks like it has a wall in it. See, right through there. It's kind of hard to see. But it's almost like it has its own little world happening. It's got this big, like, lot there, like, right through the, oh, there we go. Right through the front right there. See it? That big, goes right through the middle. But this is my absolute most favorite crystal. I've had this since I was, oh, Jesus. Well, I'm 54 now, and I got this when I was about 15 or 16. And this is and it, oh, it's got a little tiny baby on the side too. Look, it's got a baby. Look at the little tiny baby right there. It's a little baby crystal on the side of it. I always thought that was kind of cool. Um, but I've had this one forever and I still love it. I, I just cleared it recently. You can put them in salt and put them in a bowl. And I have the full moon coming through my window and I do it that way usually. Um, not just any salt, <laughs> sea salt, or I actually use pink Himalayan. Um, sea salt. This was my very first amethyst crystal I ever bought and it is a very 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 light purple and I remember I was so excited when I bought this. It was around the same time I got that one. It was not too long after. It's It was a little bit cheaper. It's got like a little chip on the top right there which I didn't really mind but I think I maybe paid like you know five or ten bucks for this back in the day and it's just a little amethyst point and I always wanted an amethyst point, and this one just kind of showed up in my life not too long after that one. And then these were the next two I got. And I also, this is my first double, you know, with like two of them together, like so. It's really pretty. It's really, really pretty one. And this is a single one that I got that's a smaller one. And so all of these crystals <laughs> I have had since I was a teenager. And no, all, with all my moves, everywhere I go, multiple roommates, everything, I have never lost these things because these are so important to me that there's just things that they've traveled with me my whole life. And it's so crazy to think that, like, honestly, with the, accept with the exception of, like, two or three friends in my life that are, one of them lives in Texas and one lives in California. With the exception of those two friends, other than my family, these crystals and these tarot cards have been with me the longest. Like, I have a bunch of like my baby stuff too. But as far as like things I got when I was a teenager that have stuck with me that are really important to me, 
God, I just can't put this down. It's, I, I love this one. So this is the last thing I'm going to show you. And this is my first double crystal that has a point on each end. And man, was I, this was a score. It's not really, really clear, but I wanted one with a point on both ends. The thing with these is like the energy goes, travels through them. So they always say like the double pointed, you know, they have like a, an energy flow through them, not just through the point, but it just kind of, so it has kind of different purpose than the other ones. But I like this one because it's almost like frosted glass. It's focus. There we go. It's almost like a frosted glass. It's really pretty. And I love the double terminating like point. And then it does also have this little guy on this side too. Focusing, please. There we go. So we have that little guy on the side also. So that is my oldest crystals. I did not bring my crystal ball. I do have an amethyst crystal ball. I got that a little bit later. I think I got that when I was maybe 19 or something like that, but I didn't bring that to show you this time. Maybe I'll show you in a different video. Anyway, I don't want to say these things are my forgotten favorites, but they have been on my shelf. And I recently, since I've redone my master bedroom, I have an entire shelf with my entire tarot card collection on it now. So if that's something you'd like to see, I've been considering doing a tour. And there is a, a question tag from a guy called The Hermit's Cove, if you've ever heard of him. He does tarot stuff on YouTube. And he did a questionnaire about tarot cards. It's like, what was your first deck? What's your favorite deck? You know, uh, what's your least favorite deck? Whatever. He asks all these questions, right? Um, favorite way to read, favorite layout, blah, blah, blah. And I, I always wanted to do that questionnaire. I have it saved. And I thought that might be fun to do that and go through all of my decks because if you think this is it for my decks, no. Um, Nightingale Wednesday Nightmare sent me like a million tarot decks to add to my collection. So those are all up there, but I also have so many other ones. I have a feng shui tarot deck. I have a lot of like manifestation cards and things like that that I've collected. Moon cards. Um, people have sent me cards as gifts, so I have a lot. So if you want to see that, let me know. But this is just a little bit different side that I don't always talk about, but it is big time there. And you should know because <laughs> there's a tarot card of the moon tattooed on my shoulder. And that was my f my second tattoo. After this little tiny ankh, I went for this big ass, like big, huge tarot card on my shoulder that I had to try to hide from my mom and dad when I was 18 and I was still living at home. I moved out shortly after they, but they were like, <sighs> only daughter, youngest, getting tattoos. It didn't go over well at first. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out all the um, people in the collab. Whoever did videos, I'll try to link below. I'm, uh, the links might be up tomorrow. I think some people might be doing later too. Like I said, I know Susan's just making it, is taking the week off this week, so you won't see hers. But I'm going to try to do this every Friday. Even if it's not makeup, it may be it may be foods. If there is something that's a forgotten favorite that you want me to talk about, also mention it in the comments below. I'm willing to talk about TV shows. I'm willing to talk about movies, books. Oh, we have to do books one week. But I think next week I want to do, you know what I might do next week? Because uh, Meet Me in the Underworld is actually based on a mythological story type of thing. Maybe next week we'll do that palette and I'll talk about some of my favorite books from way, 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 way back. I have, I've kept my books too. I've brought books with me from when I was a teenager. So I might pull some of those out and maybe I'll just do a makeup look and show some of those. Uh, let me know what you want to see. Oh, the most important thing, hopefully you're still watching and you're still here. Next Friday, I will be going live from Michigan with my bestie, Jeremy. If you're new here, you don't know who Jeremy is. We do, we did my podcast, Sin and Tonic, for a long time, first couple of years of my channel. Uh, and I want to get back to doing it again. We're just trying to find a way that works for both of us because he's in Michigan and I'm here. So we have to do a Do We Know Them style podcast. If you haven't watched Do We Know Them, I love it. Um, great podcast. Highly recommend. You can find it on YouTube. Look up Do We Know Them with Lily Marsden and... I forgot her name and I feel bad. Um, uh, Jessie Smiles. 
Lily Marsden and Jesse Smiles do, do we know them? And they do, they look like they're in the same room, but they're actually in two completely different states. And if I could figure out how to do that for me and Jeremy, I would love to do it because we had so much fun doing our podcast. But when I go back to Detroit, I'm going to be doing a lot of recording with him. And I am going to have my thousandth uploaded video coming up soon. So what I thought was next Friday, I will try to plan it so that my thousandth video will be the live next Friday. I'm hoping that'll work out. So hopefully that'll work. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> plan on plan on seeing me live next Friday night from Michigan. Put it on your calendar. It'll probably be like 7, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It could be an all-nighter. You know, me and Jeremy, we'll be drinking, we'll be talking, we'll be yammering away. So I'm also going to do a trip with uh, around Michigan right where I'm staying, uh, my old stomping grounds where I grew up. There are a whole bunch of resale shops. So Jeremy and I are going to go resale shop shopping and we're going to film the whole thing and see what we can find at the resale shop. So come back for that. That's probably going to be in a couple weeks because I'm going to be gone for a few days. I'll, I'll have some things pre-uploaded. Anyway, whew, all that said, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this little peek into um, some very things that really formed me and my thoughts and who I am. These things are so a part of me. It's just kind of, it's so weird to look at them. And it, I don't want to, like I said, they're not forgotten, but they're always on a shelf. And just to take these out and like hold them and, you know, even my cards and like shuffling these cards because I've been reading some new ones, but it just feels so like, like I just got them. Like it's, there's no time. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'm getting deep and end of this whole thing. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!